Would you believe looking at this sign that it was only seven months ago that Cron Technologies, having raised over half a million dollars for their Kronos 1.4 affordable high-speed camera on Kickstarter, moved from the founder's garage into what could probably be best described as the founder's much more bigger, much more better garage. Well, it was, so things are a little rough around the edges. And this group of seven or eight, somehow they weren't exactly sure when I asked them, of big nerds basically have... Well, hey, it's true! It's true and you know it! As I was saying, this group of big nerds hasn't got the place fully set up yet in a conventional sense, but in some ways, that's what's really exciting about it. Come with me and take a peek behind the curtain of a real startup. The Silicon Valley vibe is definitely real, and this place is seriously cool, if you're into that sort of thing. Speaking of being into that sort of thing, if you're into high quality computers, this video is brought to you by Origin PC. They build beautiful custom desktops, they sell high performance laptops, and they offer lifetime 24-7 tech support. They use only high quality products like Samsung's 960 Pro M.2 SSDs, which offer amazing performance. Visit Origin PC today through the link below to learn more. The place looks like a typical office. That is at least until you actually poke your head into any of the actual workspaces. So this is Loyal's cubicle, where in addition to a laptop on a stand and an extra monitor, he's got another extra monitor and he's got an oscilloscope for measuring electrical signals off of probes, as well as a gorgeous piece of microscopery here that he uses to hand solder uh, bodges, which are sort of last minute quick fixes to bad boards or bad batches of boards, or the very, very delicate leads that you see on a board like this, which are required to probe CPU functionality, or RAM signaling. So it was actually through this board here that Cron Technologies was able to get two sticks of memory working, bumping their maximum capacity to 32 gigs. That is double what similar competitors can offer. But how did we get here? To answer that, we're going to take a look at the museum, a collection of development board PCBs screwed to pieces of plywood sitting on a boardroom table that was clearly along with the chairs around it, acquired from some other company's bankruptcy auction. So this, this is the first Kronos. It was built and programmed single-handedly by Kron Technologies founder, David Kronstein. He loved the cool stuff that Mythbusters was doing back in the mid 2000s, but as a student, he couldn't afford even the inexpensive Olympus that he found on eBay for 3,500 bucks. So he went, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna make my own. So this first iteration here, completed in 2008, was made of off-the-shelf development kits that were relatively limited compared to what's available in the maker scene today. It was only capable of 640 by 480 resolution at 240 frames per second max, so not game-changing, but it worked, and it only cost him 500 bucks. That is to say, if you don't count time. The second gen refined the original design. It wasn't more compact, but it could record at 1280 by 1024 and add up to 500 frames per second. So now we're getting somewhere. By the third gen, it was 2012 or 2015, depending on how you count. And thanks to a foldable board design, the PCB along with all of the other components could be fitted into a custom 3D printed ABS housing. So this was the first one that was capable of looking like an actual camera. Then we've got some kind of prototypey looking things, 3D printed metal uh, wood. This was apparently for uh, designing the feel of the grip. And then finally, the Kronos 1.4. So this is the actual camera that shipped to Kickstarter backers back in midsummer last year. 
It's not that cheap. In fact, I'm sure the irony of a price tag that his 2006 self wouldn't have been able to afford isn't lost on David, but the capabilities of the Kronos 1.4 far exceed that camera he saw on eBay. It's got a form factor that is very similar to a normal stills picture camera. It takes standard C-mount lenses, and it can capture burst shots and video, either raw or converted to MP4, at resolutions of up to 1280 by 1024 and frame rates of up to 38,500 frames per second. If you wanted something comparable from one of the big guys in the space, you could get that, and it would probably have more features. So David's team knows that they need to continue to add functionality through firmware updates going into the future, but it would cost you four to five times as much or more. So knowing that price is one of their advantages, David's team is building their cameras in this workshop here behind me, right here in Canada, around standard commodity parts with careful attention to whether they or their users really need something fancier, especially if it comes at the cost of creating or buying something proprietary. The ARM Cortex-A8 based CPU that runs the user interface is actually about nine years old. But in general, H.264 encoders haven't really changed that much in that time outside of the very high end, so they're sticking with it for now, and there are a ton of examples of this kind of thing. Um, a lot of work was put into making it possible to pull data off the sensor at high speed into the RAM with a $35 FPGA. By contrast, the analogous FPGAs in a phantom camera could cost thousands of dollars. The, uh, the touchscreen is actually from a Chinese manufacturer. I think, that, yep, there's one here off of DigiKey or Mouser or something like that. And the RAM, this is what actually holds the buffered video because the data rates are so high. It's just standard notebook DDR3 sodium RAM off of like Newegg. And this philosophy of openness continues in the user accessories. So you can just use off the shelf laptop adapters to power it. If you want a battery pack, you just need to pick up a Nikon ENEL4A battery pack. And in terms of storage, so once you dump off of the RAM onto something more permanent, you can use a standard SD card, you can just use a USB device, you can use PowerD SATA, and coming soon, they've even got Ethernet. So what we end up with is a finished product that is surprisingly robust thanks to the thick aluminum machined chassis. So this one right here uh, actually got hit by a 300 kilometer per hour ice ball and survived. And then this one was actually pulled into an industrial filing machine. And now obviously the LCD didn't make it, but the rest of the internals actually did survive with only minimal damage to the outside of the chassis. So behind me here, David is actually capturing colored water droplets at 1500 frames per second. And this is absolutely incredible. Now, the monochrome version does give you a little bit higher effective resolution, and it requires only half as much light, which is really, really important for high-speed videography, but it doesn't have quite the wow factor of the color one. Okay, we gotta go find some more cool stuff to do. So this one right here is a lot of fun. This is called a kaboosh, kaboosh, kaboosh. So this was actually uh, how they created the effect in the Stargate portals. Let's go have a look at it. Oh, that looks beautiful. Cool. <laughs> okay, so we're all set up. Uh, David's running at uh, 1500 frames per second there. Uh, Sean's got 6,000, and then we've got a third camera here at 6,000. Moment of truth time. Ah! <laughs> All right, let's have a look. Yeah. Dang, that's beautiful. Of course, we're not done yet though. What slow-mo video would be complete without some destruction? For that, 
we will need what they call the Mohem Room. So in here you will find not one, not two, not three, not four, but five of their Kronos 1.4 cameras, a uh, flipped over lawn mower that you can drop stuff in, a uh, reinforced plywood, whatever that means, cage, as well as a mesh roof and the world's most technologically advanced dropping mechanism, a dowel with a piece of string. This is gonna be fun. Oh right, one last thing. Hit the lights for 1,000 watt LEDs, water cooled with about one third of the brightness of the sun so we don't miss any of the action. Let's drop them. How do I turn this on? Wow. Is there anything protecting those cameras? Nope, not really. All right, next up, we've got a Fujifilm uh, tape, tape drive tape, like a backup tape. Three, two, one. Whoa. Something hit this door pretty friggin' hard. Wow! What the hell? It looks like there was a party in here and everyone was invited. And for our last trick, the guys who put spray foam into our warehouse expansion destroyed all of our cardboard cutouts from LTX last year. See, they're all stained and stuff. So I'm gonna let you, the viewers, vote. Leave a comment with who you want to see shredded, because we're only gonna do one. Linus, Taryn, Dennis, or Luke. And don't cheat. Leave a comment, it, it really works. Really? Oh, all right. Let's see if we can figure out how to put me into the lawnmower here. All right. I think I'd rather go in head first, end the suffering. This, uh, I'm finding your, uh, your workplace um, very heightist. I'm finding this to be a heightist workplace. Okay. All right, you know what? I'm just gonna rip this arm off. So that was a lot of fun, and at three to four thousand dollars a pop, depending on how long of a record buffer you want, these things are actually within the reach of affluent hobbyists who want to load up an air cannon with bouncy balls and record the hilarity or whatever else. But the main market for these, and they're apparently shipping upwards of 400 of these devices per year now at the current rate, and this is ignoring Kickstarter, are research institutions, uh, universities, the manufacturing sector. I mean, you can imagine it would be a lot easier to, you know, debug a faulty robot arm that screws on bottle caps if you can really see what it's doing, um, as well as armorers and trigger manufacturers, and even rocket thrust researchers, because they're so much lower cost than the other options available that you could have several of them, giving you multiple angles on it at a time. Something that's absolutely invaluable. They even support synchronizing the cameras so you can record stereo 3D of what's going on at 6,000 plus frames per second. So I'm really excited about what these guys are doing. I was absolutely thrilled to find out that they're in my backyard in Burnaby, British Columbia, and I wish them all the best. Apparently they're hiring right now. What was it, software and hardware engineers? So sorry, it was, yeah, software engineers with Linux kernel experience and hardware with FPGA experience. FPGA experience is the big one. So uh, yeah, these guys have got big plans. Wish you guys the best of luck, because what you're doing here is awesome. And speaking of plans that are awesome, Ting is our sponsor for today. Ting is the mobile carrier that's focused on customer service and customer satisfaction. And with Ting, it's awesome because you don't need a one-size-fits-all plan. You pay for only what you use, with the average Ting bill coming in at just $23 a month per device per month. I've said month twice, but it's okay. You guys get the point. 
And you don't have to skimp on customer service either. When you call Ting, you will speak to a real human being. And you can find out if you'll save money on Ting at linus.ting.com. We're going to have that link below. It's their savings calculator. You punch in your last couple of bills, and it'll tell you how much you'll save. If you switch to Ting, they'll cover 25% of your cancellation fee up to 75 bucks. And if you use our link, you can get another $25 off towards a new device or off your first bill. So check it out at the link in the video description. So if you guys dislike this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. These things. Also down there is our uh, merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.